Let me just try and understand what's moving commodity markets. Tom Price, Global Commodity Analyst at UBS, is joining me on the phone line from Sydney. Tom, very good morning. Uh, I actually want to start with China before I come to crude and gold specifically. Uh, you know, those property curbs that have been announced, the weak services number, uh, is that weighing down broadly commodity sentiment or at least metal sentiment? Yeah, it sure has. I mean, uh, the government's basically uh, saying that they're going to constrain uh, trading activity in, in the property sector. That basically is what it amounts to. Uh, so uh, that obviously affects a very wide range of commodities, uh, everything from iron, steel, uh, through to copper. Um, so uh, that's, uh, that's probably been a big negative factor just over the last few days. All right. Uh, on the oil side, uh, you know, prices have been sort of creeping lower. Uh, what are the factors that are, uh, that have pushed oil to about 90 on the WTI basket in particular? Yeah, it's, that's more of a U.S. story. Um, the, uh, the, the U.S. Um, uh, government and parties there couldn't agree on um, a, 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 a management of a, a cut to spending rates there at a government level. So we should expect an automatic um, cut to the spending rate uh, by the government, and uh, and that basically threatens economic growth uh, in the U.S. And uh, so straight away that affects uh, the oil uh, markets, but it also affects uh, metal markets. Uh, copper, aluminium, and nickel are also exposed to this policy shift. So basically, the two biggest commodity-consuming countries in the world, the U.S. and China, for different reasons, uh, uh, have uh, basically brought about a policy change that undermines uh, the aggregate demand growth outlook for the commodity market. So it's a very bearish view at this stage. Uh, what's, uh, what are your targets then on crude? I mean, how much further could we see a drop? And, you know, right now I believe net long positions are uh, have been falling. Uh, would people turn buyer at, you know, at prices at the current levels? Well, it's very difficult to see uh, what prices will, how they will respond, but I think they've already gone through their biggest correction. The sorts of things buyers should think about, and it's not just an oil thing, this applies to metal markets as well, is any sort of stability in the price signals. And that's the signal to um, look for, uh, and that's, uh, that's, that'll prompt people to engage the trades again. So we currently forecast about $95 a barrel um, for WTI, uh, 105 for uh, Brent over the next 12 months. Um, so the spot prices have moved below those levels. So any sort of stability, and we, uh, that would encourage us to buy. So there's five, probably up to $10 upside over the next few days and weeks. Uh, just a quick last word on how you're looking at oil now, sorry, uh, uh, at gold now. Uh, at current levels, are you a buyer? Are you still a seller on gold? Well, that's, um, that's been uh, having a tough time over the last few months. Um, the reason for that is because uh, the US dollar and the US economy has been performing very well uh, and that's created um, a, a shift in sentiment. People are feeling more optimistic, have been feeling more optimistic about the outlook and therefore not so concerned about inflation. That's a bad environment for gold. But uh, with these cuts um, in spending at a, at a government level, a shift in fiscal policy in the US, um, it's possible um, that we might have to see um, QE programs in the US expand in order to offset uh, a change in the fiscal policy. Uh, now, that's inflationary, and so that creates a, a, a marginally more bullish outlook for gold. So, so I'd say um, gold would probably carry a little bit more upside risk over the next few weeks. All right, got that. Tom, thanks so much for your call on the commodity space.